podcast is brought to you by LMU Munich. Okay, so uh, so the program number two uh, is about uh, finding appropriate condition for uh, boundary of conformal field theory, which preserve the topological BRC symmetry, and so this requires uh, some discussion of. Uh, boundary condition of worksheet theory. So I would like to provide some additional uh, uh, discussion on that just for like five minutes or so. So uh, suppose you have a boundary of the worksheet so that wor you have a worksheet on this side and here it's empty. And you want to understand the boundary condition for this. So last week I understand that there was some set of lectures for on the introduction of string theory. So was there any dif dif discussion of D-brain? So you, you had the definition, uh, this discussion. So for example, if you have a uh, uh, worksheet coordinate x, uh, sorry, uh, the string, uh, bosonic string variable x, which maps a uh, worksheet to some target space, then if you have a derivative operator on the worksheet along the boundary, which I denote by del parallel, and this is the del partial, then, then Dirichlet, condition can be written as the derivative of x along the boundary to be equal to zero, whereas Neumann boundary condition should be the derivative of x along a, a transverse normal to the boundary should be equal to zero. So this is a standard notation. Well, if I use complex coordinate on the worksheet Z. So this is a real axis and this is the imaginary axis. So that the boundary is along the imaginary axis. Then the Dirichlet condition can be written as del x is equal to del bar of x. And Neumann condition is del x is equal to minus of del bar x, as you can easily figure out. Now, so the first program set has to do with the question of how we can choose a boundary condition that preserves this uh, BRST symmetry. Uh, so the so, uh, topological BRST symmetry, <coughs> excuse me. So I have to define what, I have to remind you what it was. So uh, in my convention, G plus is equal to G i j bar psi i del of x j bar. G minus is equal to G i j bar psi j bar del of x i. And although I didn't write that explicitly, G bar plus is g i j bar psi bar of j bar of del bar of x i. And the g bar of minus is g i j bar psi uh, i bar of del bar of x j bar. So there are these four supercurrents. And <coughs> please excuse me. So in the case of A model, BRST operator is given by integral of G plus and G bar plus. And in the case of B model, BRST operator is given by integral of G plus and G bar minus. So therefore, if you want a boundary condition which preserves A type boundary condition, uh, A type BRC operator, then you do need the boundary condition to be G plus is equal to either plus or minus G bar plus, so that the boundary condition is consistent with this uh, choice of BRC operator. In the case of B type model, you want G plus to be plus or minus equal to 
g bar minus. So the, po uh, the, the question is to find out what these conditions imply <coughs> when you translate that into condition on psi and x. So that was a question. So let me give you some hint on how you can start thinking about this problem. So uh, let's consider the following uh, ansatz. So suppose you consider a little bit more general condition than the Dirichlet and Neumann condition that I wrote over there. Suppose you impose a condition that the del mu so suppose, uh, so here I'm choosing using complex coordinate i and i bar. But suppose I, I choose some real coordinate x mu. <coughs> so i was going from 1 to n, for example, in the case of Calabria n fold, mu can go from 1 to 2n. Two, two so suppose you consider a general mixed boundary condition like that. In order for this boundary condition to be consistent with world sheet supersymmetry, you'd also want the boundary condition for the fermion to be like that. Then you can show that if we want energy momentum tensor to be conserved under the boundary condition, and if you, in addition, want the n equal 1 supercharge to be conserved, where g is the sum of uh, <coughs> g plus and g minus for the left mover, and uh, g bar plus and g bar minus of the right mover. If you like, this correspond to n equal 1 super conformal generator. If you require this boundary condition, then you can show that this implies that uh, g mu nu, r mu rho, r nu sigma is g rho sigma. Namely, that means that uh, this matrix is essentially rotation matrix, O2n matrix, with respect to this metric. Well, this is, a, this is, this is one thing, first thing that you may want to check. And these conditions are stronger than that. So that means that it would mean give you some further condition on this matrix. It turns out that uh, these condition on this matrix has a simple geometric interpretation, as I ask you to prove in the problem number two. That is, that in the case of A-type brain, it gives you the condition that the subspace on which the boundary is ending, namely the configuration of the D-brain, being that it is a Lagrangian submanifold, whereas in the case of B-type boundary condition, it means that the uh, D-brain is wrapping on holomorphic submanifold. So that's what I want you to show. So on the boundary, so so this means that at the boundary, left moving Virasoro R generator and right moving Virasoro generator being identified. And uh, I believe that's what, the, the, well, when uh, uh, you had the lecture on uh, introduction to string theory, that wasn't it? Wasn't this, this being discussed or it was not discussed? Yeah, so well, I think that this, this is a basic property that D brain should satisfy in order for the boundary condition to be compatible with the Virasoro constraint. Any other question? OK, yes. Well, so those are the conditions so that BRC operator is being preserved under boundary condition. For the same reason, yeah. But this is a stronger condition than these conditions. Because here, you are preserving only n equal 1 superconformal symmetry, whereas here, 
you are preserving more, said namely, you are separately preserving left moving symmetry and right moving symmetry. Uh, sorry, G plus symmetry and G minus symmetry. Any other question? Ah, okay, so the, uh, you have that because, uh, actually, I should have also put that over here. Because uh, uh, when you glue the fermions together, uh, you have a, in the case of fermion, you have an ambiguity or you have a choice of sign to make. You don't have that choice for the boson. Okay? So now I guess you can go on and uh, try to solve it, but you can of course raise your hand and ask uh, any questions. Please. 